What's up? Thousand Pound Pig here. This is Star Drive. This is a four time strategy game, which means you have to control your units on a huge epic scale. In this, you can colonize planets, build ships, fight in interstellar wars, and expand your empire. You can micromanage or macromanage, I guess. It is a surprisingly deep game made by one person. One person made this? I'm not exactly sure. That might have just been a rumour. But this first Star Drive came out in 2013, while Star Drive 2 came out in 2015. I'm playing this one, the first one, because in Star Drive 2 there was a lot which was missing in Star Drive 1. So that tells me that this first Star Drive is a classic. This is a classic game. The developers, or the developer, will not go back to this kind of format where a lot of people like this format more, and I know why, which I will explain to you throughout the series. But for this first episode, we will be focusing on, I guess, an introduction to the game, where I will be talking about the most unique thing about this game, which would have to be all of the different races. And I'll be going through the HUD, like what you'll see me clicking, what you'll see me doing, and how to start off the game, I guess. So there will be a lot in this first episode, and this will continue on. So hopefully you like this series, and please, if you like this series, then please thumb up the video, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff, because I don't want to ask this and kind of ruin the whole series by asking this at the end of every video like some people do. So I hope you enjoy it and we will click the new game. And here we can see all the different races. There are eight different races and they are all pretty unique. But I don't just... Well, what makes I... What, what I believe is what makes 4 times strategy games so interesting sometimes are the diversity of all the different races. You, you never know what you're playing against and with diplomacy it's hard to predict what's going to happen. I have played this a few times so I may be able to predict a few things but I'll just break it down as to why I didn't choose certain races. I did not choose the human race because humans are boring, honestly. Everyone chooses them, they are kind of the vanilla default race so I'd rather stay away from them. Uh, the Cordrazine and the Draylock race, they're both really hard to play against I find. The Draylock have really good spies so if you play as a Draylock you tend to win on in that side of the game. Well, if you play as a core scene, they tend to expand really well, and I find that really hard and interesting to play against. So we don't want to make this too easy for us, and we don't want to make it too hard. Well, it doesn't really matter if we make it too hard, as long as it's fun, I guess. And the Kurathi, I don't want to play as them, because a lot of people already do that. If you just look around on YouTube, blog posts and things, Everyone seems to play as a Kurathi because they're samurai bears or something. I guess that's funny to them. I uh, I just don't see the point. They are a pretty good. Yeah, they are a pretty good race. I guess uh, they're one of the more vanilla races. They aren't. They don't swing too very aggressive or very passive. So they're kind of a nice balance right in the middle. But once again, I'd rather play against them. Maybe have them as a good ally or something. And this leaves the final four. I don't want to choose a pause because they are easily the most passive class or the passive race in the game. They they love peace, okay, and I don't really like their their vehicles, they're kinda of crappy as well. So I'd rather play against them. I just hope that these guys don't go all gunny us and on us and in the end game throw nuclear bombs at us. That would suck. Now this leaves us with three more factions which are all the most aggressive factions in the game. I don't want to choose the Optus because I don't like their vehicles. They're kind of space bugs, but they're robots. I don't really think that's unique. I don't really like their design or anything like that. It's just, it's boring. And all their ships are pretty slow, and I just don't like them, honestly. Yeah. So with the Rauria and the Volfa, I did not choose the Rauria because I like their design. I like playing against them. They're kind of Sithun, Sithun inspired. I don't know how you even say that word. They are a very stubborn race to play against, and I think that might be really interesting. So I'm going to be playing as a Vulfa. The thing with the Vulfa is that the AI can't control them very well. The AIs tend to turn into idiots because all their default modules kind of really, really suck. And all the races tend to bully them around. If you're playing the game and you're right next to the Vulfa, they tend to be really, really aggressive because they have a really good early game. They are a warlike race and they tend to just bully their neighbours around. But in the long run, that really does hurt. So when they are surrounded by the AI on all sides, then they're kind of the first race to take a lot of punishment and even get wiped out. But I will be changing the Volfar a bit just to make it a bit more entertaining to watch. First off, they're not the Volfar anymore. I've called them the Pig Imperium. The race name singular is Pigs. The plural are Pigs, of course, what do you expect? And I also changed their logo just for... I like the pink, okay? Shut up! So the Vulfin Imperium is an empire comprised of Vulfin, 
Vulfin are a race of terrestrial beings with a high reproductive rate and unremarkable dietary needs. Physically, Vulfin possess a non-threatening countenance that projects neither an overabundance of strength or weakness. However, they are offensively mannered with many odoriferous bodily functions that tend to drive others away from them. To make matters worse, Vulfin are somewhat dumb for a starting race and have difficulty being created. So in the physical tab you can see here that they are fertile which means minimum growth is 0.1 per turn because they like doing it a lot and they have multiple children when they get when they give birth. They are also repulsive which is kind of scary. 20% uh, initial diplomatic relations. No, but no other race is really like us because we smell or something. I don't know. And they are also dumb so it's just 35% penalty to research. I'm totally fine with that because I don't really want a huge advantage in the research anyway. Same with our military. Now the Vulfar government is functional and stable. Vulfar work ethic is strong yet their engineering skills are poor, producing goods and ships of somewhat inferior quality. This I don't really agree with, I will be changing some of these, but at the moment the default Vulfar is like, they are industrious, so they work a lot, they have 35% bonus production, they are hard workers, and haphazard engineers. Which means uh, they have a 20% module hit points. So the modules, as in the guns and the cargo holes and things which go on their ship, take more damage. And finally, for history and tradition, the Volfar homeworld of Volfar, which I'm keeping the name. Oh wait, no, I'm not. I'm yeah. The name will still be Volfar. Is a, is of an average size for a Terran planet. A strong history of military conflict has made the military a central part of this race's culture. Furthermore, Vulfar naval tradition is very strong and it can be expected that this race will have a strong fleet presence throughout the galaxy. So what's normal here, I guess, is naval tradition. 35% reduction to shipbuilding costs because they tend to build a lot of ships. Uh, they are militaristic which means they already have researched a few military things such as a military outpost, corvette hulls and things. Uh, go away. What the hell steam update? I hate it when that happens. I don't know how to turn it off as well, it's just so annoying. And pack mentality, which I think really makes this race stand out. 25% damage to ship weapons, 5% bonus to damage up to 50% among allies. So it just, just means that their fleets are stronger than most fleets, but when they are close together, their ships, you know, you can't... It's, it's like, their ships still suck. So the way I'll be chaining this is I'll be having a polluted homeworld which gives us minus 0.5 fertility on their homeworld. Uh, I need to do this because well we're pigs and you know we don't we tend to be a bit grubby I guess. But I want to open up some more points for some other things. Uh, I also need to turn all this military stuff off. So this gives us 12 points to spend you can see over here. So you can make your own custom races. You can even make yourself like cybernetic humans or something. But I'm going to stick with Wolfar and I guess I'm making the pig race. So polluted homeworld, we also want uh, advanced flagship. Where, where is it? Where's the advanced flagship? I saw a prototype flagship there. So it just starts it off, us off with a really good ship because I, once again, I don't want to make this too hard or too easy for us. I want to give this a lot of character. I want to do all the cool stuff in the game and show it to you. So polluted homeworld. Uh, prototype flagship and we also want to be spiritual which gives us a 50% bonus to all effects received from artifacts. Uh, in the game there are anomalies and you can pick artifacts from them which just gives you your race a whole passive bonus like your ground troops do 25% more damage or something and you find them around the place. They're kind of hard to find though so we're gonna try and get them maybe even trade for them if we have to. Now we'll go to the sociological tab and we want Mercantile, which gives us 0.5 credits for each unit of food production moved by a freighter within the Empire. So we want more money, basically, and we want to be efficient. And this gives us 25% reduction on ship and building maintenance, which I think is huge because I hate building maintenance. Now efficient and haphazard engineers don't really make sense, so I'll get rid of haphazard engineers. Points to spend, zero, so we've done it. This is how we're going to play. So we're kind of like on... On paper it makes us look like we are a young race with not much military experience but we build ships really well. We build them so well that that is basically what we trade to all the other races. We trade ship parts because we are efficient, we're smart with that and we're just, we're not so 
dumb. I guess you can. S we still have this dumb trade on, but I guess we're just. Just think of it as we're really good at making ships, but outside of the ships, we're all kind of awkward and weird. I guess uh, like a lot of people who really like computers. <laughs> Uh, so, I think that's it. Uh, we do have to change. Galaxy size will make it large and definitely we will make it harder. I have not played on the hard before. I've kind of done well on normal, but I have not got to the end game. And seven opponents. This is the max opponents I can have. So I'll leave it at seven opponents and we will start. Now I should say that I haven't installed any other mods except for the unofficial black box mod which is kind of official because the main guy who made this Daniel Di Chico kind of endorses this mod. This mod is kind of like an unofficial patch. It fixes a lot of bugs, it adds a few new features, helps the AI with a lot of problems as well. So I'll just be playing through that. I did try other mods but they crashed after a while so this is the most stable version I can play at the moment. Also I should probably say that this is the only loading screen in the game. Usually I edit these loading screens out. I try to cut them out to make the whole game look natural without loading screens but I'm gonna leave this one in just so you guys can see that this game actually does have a loading screen and this is what it looks like. So let's click to continue and here's our world, here's our flagship. For some reason it's called Perseverance. I'm gonna change that immediately there. I'm so funny. Okay, now this is our world. This is our little planet. It's called Vator 3 instead of Earth. This is our prototype flagship called Pigaverance. We can zoom in for a bit more detail, but we can also zoom out. Look at this. Oh, here's our other ships as well. Here's our scout. Here's our flagship, and here's a colony ship, but watch this. Now here's our system. Uh, there's other planets as well, which is Great, great to see. Uh, this is a gas giant, we can't colonize that, we can colonize that, and of course our home planet is already colonized, but we can zoom out more. Yeah, look at this, this is a large galaxy they say, you see there's a lot of planets, there's not, there's not too many planets, but a lot of these planets and systems you can't exactly colonize, because it's just like that, that's how it works, because a lot of these planets are barren, like this one here is, is a barren planet, which means you can't grow a lot of stuff on there, but it's good for in industry work. But in this episode, because this is the first video, I will break down well what you will see, what you will see, all these tabs and things, just so you can tell for future. Up the top left is a research, so we'll go to that. This is the research tab where we can just click a bunch of things. So we'll just click a bunch of things which we want to learn, stuff which is pretty important. Interstellar governance is probably the most important thing to to uh, learn first. Xenolinguistic, I really like that as well. Not many people really do, it seems. I'm going to put that higher than Industrial Foundations. Uh, what else is there? Subspace Theory and Reaction Drive, I like that. Depends how big the Empire is at the start. Missile Theory will be good against uh, drones. Uh, that should probably go up as well. As you can see, you're not just researching one thing at a time, like a game like Civilization or something. You can have your own queue, which I think is really cool. Now back to the main screen, here is our economy tab, we can change the text and stuff. I'm not going to touch that but I'll try to look at it every now and then. Uh, I'll, you'll see why soon. Ship list, this is all our ships, of course this will grow and we can select them all one by one and it will just zoom straight to it. Fleets, uh, I'll show you that once we get to it. And same with the shipyard, this helps us make our own ship. Next is the empire, this is all our planets which we own, you see like food, industrial, and science, so that's all really important, and as you earn each planet, they'll pop up here. But I'm not going to be using that screen because that's boring, I'd rather be using this screen where you can see things a bit more clearly. Uh, espionage, I should probably hire some espionage agents, so I'm just going to hire three spies, Stanky Buddy, Buddy Bloodseeker, and Stanky Drooler. Okay, whatever, you can see <laughs> the names kind of have a theme because we are supposedly dogs or something. I'll talk more about espionage later as it pops up. Same with diplomacy, same kind of screen. Here you can see economic, scientific, military and population strength, 11111. You can also see your empire's bonuses, intelligence reports, so how many planets you own, how many starships, treasury, uh, how many spies, population. Uh, your own artifacts as well, of course I have none because I haven't found any anomalies. And that's it. Oh, up the top right hand corner you can see the star date, so we are on our first turn of course. You can make this so it pauses at the end of every turn, or everyone is forced to do their, their turn first, but I'm doing this live, 
of course. So everyone will be doing something. So I could be managing this planet on the other side of the damn galaxy. This one right here. I don't even know what it's, its name yet because I need to scout it. And there could be a battle happening right here. And it's kind of hard to tell as well, which is... Uh, I don't know if it's good or bad about this game. I don't know. But also down here, the AI hotkey. I can select the AI to do certain things. So auto research, which means it will research certain things if I have not assigned to it, but hopefully we don't forget about that. I will also make automatic freighters and projectors, but not yet. Not yet, because I need to do something very important. First off, we need to tell our team, or our empire, to scout. So just turn your shields off and go scout. Get out of here. Get out of here. And I also, I don't want them to uh, fight anyone. Actually, you should probably keep your shields on. So you can see down the bottom left, this is your ship screen. You can do this just for a better view, but that doesn't do anything. If they take damage, it, no, that doesn't work. It's not interactive or anything. If this takes damage, you see like red and yellow squares pop up. And that's kind of scary to see that, honestly. And you can't assign what, you're, what you want it to do. So you can make it attack from a certain direction of his ship, for like port side or whatever, or you can just have it attack like front on as it's moving somewhere. But I don't want him to attack anyone, that's why I did this. Ship will avoid engaging in combat, good for scouts. Also, once I do select a scout, I could have the shields on or off, which you have seen. I can make him go back to the nearest shipyard to resupply and repair. I can just make him, you know, get his ship scrapped if I need the money, I guess, or have him do automatic system defense or, um, order his ship refit so I can make his ship something else. We're not going to do that though, we want these two scouts to go out and scout for us. There they go. They will choose the narrow systems to scout. Usually it's the narrow systems. So our flagship Pigaverance is heading to this red star and this scout is heading there. I forgot to do something. I need to select our planet and show you that. This is a planet screen, whenever you click on a planet you see this. You can click on the big eye which opens the colony screen or the or the ground assault. I'll go to that later because this, this is what planets look like usually. Uh, I'll click on the colony screen and you see this doesn't, it's, this isn't just about space. This is about colony management as well, planet by planet by planet. So I will select a few things to build. Uh, I have made a few ships here already. I thought I deleted those. Oh well, we'll, um, we'll get to them one by one but I'll build some default ships first. Uh, what, what build? I want a scout ready first because scouts are awesome. I'll need some fighters as well. I can also use them for scouting just a tiny bit. Uh, this seems good. And I can also build troops. So Wolfa grunts. These are my land troops which I can make land everywhere. Uh, this seems good. I also need to focus on getting relics because we do get that bonus for all of them. So, I'll put those up a bit more. As each of these troops come out, I'll break it down one by one as they do. And I'll make this planet a core world. You can also see, you can make it industrial, agricultural, research, military, and trade hub. This just changes the what the planet focuses on. I'll make this core and I'll focus on exporting. Exporting is when uh, a planet sends their resources to somewhere else rather than relies on resources just themselves. Well, this is a core planet, which means they will, they are self-sustainable. They can make their own food, they can make their own industry, and they will send excess of it, which goes to this storage area, to other planets, which is really important for your homeworld. Every homeworld should do it. Now we'll check out our little scouts, what's going on here. They, we are right next door to a Gona system, Gona, where, and our pig variance is pretty damn slow. Let's take off his shield, he might go a bit faster, I'm not really sure. So. First off, we can pause it, as you see. We are in the top right hand corner, we are not exactly in the middle. That is a good thing, but we don't know who our neighbours are. So, usually, with seven other people, it's not exactly a huge place, but it will take a long time. There could be someone up here, there could be someone right near us. Uh, this is a hard difficulty, which I have noticed we don't spawn in the corners, as you do sometimes on normal good difficulty. Now with hard difficulty, you kind of spawn closer to the center, so a lot of factions will be around, uh, probably around here. I might even be right next door to someone, someone could be right there, their homeworld, that's kind of scary to think about. 
So I hope you enjoyed the video so far. This first episode might be very different compared to the other episodes in the future, just because I want to give a good kind of breakdown of the game and what it's about, what the what all the buttons do and things. And from now on, I will be focusing more on the story of the game as the Empire grows and all the other races and things. It should be a lot of fun. So I hope you all hang around and watch the next one. So I'll see you in that one.